James Webb is doing something no telescope before it ever could. It's watching planets that should be dead, it's catching stars explode at the dawn of time, and it's peering into clouds so dense and dark they're still forging the next generation of suns. A lava world orbiting so close to its star that its surface may be molten, yet wrapped in a thick atmosphere. The earliest supernova ever confirmed detonating when the universe was barely 5% of its current age, and a vast molecular cloud near the center of our galaxy, quietly assembling stars from cold gas and dust. At first glance, these discoveries seem unrelated. Different eras, different scales, different stories. But together, they point towards something deeper. They reveal a universe that is not static, not stable, and not built to last. A universe where even the most extreme environments, the hottest planets, the densest stars, the strongest gravity, are temporary. And now, a new theoretical study suggests something even more unsettling. The universe itself may be aging faster than we thought. When people first hear about the Big Bang, they almost always ask the same question. Where did it happen? Over there? At a point in space? But the truth is stranger. The Big Bang didn't happen somewhere. It happened everywhere. Space itself expanded. Time itself unfolded. And from that beginning came stars, galaxies, planets, and eventually us. Every star in the sky is a machine powered by fuel, hydrogen fusing into helium, releasing energy that pushes outward against gravity. That balance creates light, warmth, and stability. But no star escapes entropy. Eventually, the fuel runs out. For stars like our sun, the aftermath is a white dwarf, a dense, Earth-sized core glowing faintly with leftover heat for larger stars, gravity crushes matter into neutron stars, objects so dense that atoms collapse into nuclear matter. And if the star is massive enough, gravity wins completely, forming a black hole. For decades, physicists believed these remnants were the universe's end states. Once formed, they simply endured, unchanged for timescales so vast they might as well be eternal. Black holes were the only exception. Stephen Hawking showed that quantum effects near an event horizon cause black holes to slowly evaporate, emitting faint radiation over unimaginable lengths of time. But white dwarfs and neutron stars? They were thought to last forever. That assumption is now being challenged. A team of physicists at Radboud University in the Netherlands decided to ask a question no one had seriously pursued before. Not what happens at an event horizon, but what happens wherever space-time itself is bent to extremes. Because according to quantum physics, even empty space is never truly empty. At every moment, particle-antiparticle pairs flicker into existence and annihilate each other almost instantly. Normally, this restless activity leaves no trace, but gravity complicates things. When space-time is strongly curved, that delicate balance can be disrupted. The stretching of space and time can pull those particles apart before they annihilate. Instead of vanishing, they escape, carrying energy with them. This is the core mechanism behind Hawking radiation. What shocked the researchers was realizing that an event horizon isn't required. Curvature alone is enough. To test the idea, they built a simplified model, a perfectly spherical, ultra-dense star floating in empty space. No spin, no magnetic fields, no surface complexity, just gravity and quantum fields. And when they ran the math, the result was clear. Neutron stars and white dwarfs should also emit particles, extremely rarely but consistently. A slow, silent leak of mass into space. Each individual loss is infinitesimal. No telescope could ever detect it. But the universe has something no experiment lacks, time. Given enough of it, even the smallest losses accumulate. Neutron stars evaporate faster than white dwarfs. Black holes still fade the fastest, but not by as much as we once believed. When projected across cosmic durations, the timelines converge. 
neutron stars and stellar mass black holes disappear on similar timescales. White dwarfs last longer, but they too eventually fade. The longest possible lifespan for any compact stellar remnant comes out to about 10 to the 78th years. A staggering number, yet dramatically shorter than older predictions that imagined black holes lingering for nearly unimaginable spans of time. The universe, it seems, lets go sooner than expected. This realization reshapes how we think about cosmic permanence. And suddenly, Webb's discoveries take on a new meaning. Take that lava world, a planet so close to its star that its surface may be an ocean of molten rock. For years, scientists assumed such worlds would be airless, stripped bare by radiation. But Webb saw something else a thick atmosphere, redistributing heat, defying expectations, surviving where theory said it shouldn't. It's a reminder that nature often resists our neat categories. Then there's the earliest supernova ever observed, a massive star exploding when the universe was still young, its light traveling more than 13 billion years to reach us. What's remarkable isn't just its age, it's how familiar it looks. Even in the early universe, stars lived fast, died violently, and seeded space with heavy elements. The same cycle we see today was already underway. Creation and destruction side by side. And deep in the Milky Way's core, Webb peers into the Sagittarius B2 molecular cloud, a vast reservoir of gas and dust forging new stars in near darkness. It's a place of beginnings. Yet every star born there is already on a clock. These observations span extremes, birth, violence, endurance, yet all point to the same truth. Nothing escapes change. The Radboud study pushes this idea further. It dissolves the boundaries we once drew between cosmic objects. Black holes, neutron stars, white dwarfs. Instead of separate classes with unique destinies, they become part of a continuum, governed by density and curvature. The tighter matter is packed, the more space-time bends, and the more quantum effects eroded over time. Even after galaxies drift apart and starlight fades, the universe doesn't freeze. It keeps aging. Importantly, this picture doesn't rely on speculative physics. No exotic particles, no unstable protons, just known quantum fields interacting with curved space-time. Conservative physics with radical consequences. As compact remnants evaporate, complexity drains away. The universe doesn't end in a graveyard of frozen stars and eternal black holes. It ends quieter than that. A thin bath of low-energy radiation spreading through an ever-expanding void. The direction hasn't changed, only the speed. This work also hints at something profound. Stellar remnants occupy a rare middle ground, massive enough to warp space-time, compact enough for quantum effects to matter. They may be among the few places where general relativity and quantum mechanics truly speak to each other. Future work will complicate the picture. Real neutron stars spin, they crack, they generate magnetic fields of unimaginable strength. White dwarfs vary in composition. Each detail may refine the timeline. Some researchers even wonder whether the same processes shaped the early universe when space-time curvature was extreme everywhere. It's speculative, but poetic. The same mechanism that writes the universe's ending may have whispered during its beginning. In the end, the cosmos doesn't collapse in fire or vanish in darkness. It dissolves. Even the densest objects fade. Even gravity yields, grain by grain, to quantum restlessness. Long after stars burn out and galaxies slip beyond the horizon, physics continues its quiet work. Not dramatic, not sudden, just inevitable.